G'day guys, it's Tim here. Um, so I uh, didn't get a chance to do a review of the final episode in the live show for Filthy Rich and Homeless last week. So I um, wanted to jump on today and just uh, kind of just wrap it all up, you know, considering I've kind of uh, discussed the last two episodes. Um, so look, I mean, uh, you know, started off in the third episode and I was uh, still staying in crisis accommodation. Um, I think probably the most important thing that I want to get across about the crisis accommodation was I was very hesitant about going in there. I mean, 54 guys, uh, you know, drug and alcohol issues, um, you know, mental health. It, it, it um, you know, it was quite a volatile situation. And um, I guess when everyone's in such a small confined area, and um, and I think the thing that probably um, I felt like really intrusive. I mean, I think when I was living out on the streets, you know, I could kind of keep to myself, and you know, I've got the cameras there, and obviously the cameras sometimes do upset um, people. But um, you know, when I'm in the, the the confined space, you know, if I'd walk into a room like the rec room where the people were watching TV, you know, I mean, I felt sorry for some of the guys because you know, you might find like half of them might um, stand up and kind of you know cover their eyes or or cover their faces and, and walk out, and um, you know, I, I felt like I was. I really was intruding. I mean, this was their space. This was their, you know, I was a tourist, um, you know, and there were quite a lot of people that when I first went in there uh, didn't really want to talk to me. And, you know, I can remember, I think there's actually a, the scene that was in um, in the, the episode where, you know, I basically went in to get my food from the cafeteria uh, for the first time. I'd only really just arrived there. You know, I kind of, you know, moved my tray down, get food from the, ca um, from the people serving, and then I kind of turn around and look at the room and, um, you know, I didn't know where to see. it's that it kind of felt like that movie that you know a movie scene where you know the, the guy's in jail or something like that and they they um it's the first time in the cafeteria and you got to really interact with um other people so um you know like I said I, I really did feel like an intruder and I, I did to begin with didn't uh, feel safe but um you know one of the things I did pretty much first up was I, I just told the guys I was like look you know I know I'm a tourist I know that um this is your home and you know, I know the camera guys have got to follow me, so if I walk into a room and you don't want to be on TV, then let me know and I'll walk out. And I think that started to really build some, um, you know, build a bit of relationship with some of the guys in there. Also, I think they, they just didn't really know who I was and was I there um, as a journalist, was I there as a, an actor, you know, but gradually as I got to know the guys and, and, um, and let them know, you know, um, what I was doing and why I was doing it, um, you know, more and more people, you know, kind of started coming to me and, and wanting to share their story, and that's exactly how it happened with Adam. You know, he didn't want to speak to me at all to begin with, but um, a couple of days in, he actually kind of came to me and he said, you know, Tim, I, I, I respect what you're doing, and you know, I want to tell you my story so that you know people can, I guess, learn from it. So, um, you know, as as we were about to leave, you know, I I, I actually felt a, a huge amount of camaraderie with the guys. Um, you know, there was probably maybe 20 of them that I'd really kind of gotten to know and, and um, you know, I felt, I felt really safe. Like, I felt, you know, there's still people that, you know, were grumbling or didn't want to interact with me and I felt like if something had gone down then, um, you know, those, those guys would have had my back, you know. And then, of course, they tell me now I've got to leave and, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to leave. Um, you know, not only the guys there, but I think that that kind of structure was was really really good because not only have you got the the you know obviously food, you know shelter, rec room, but the great thing there is you've got all the support services as well. So you know, there's counsellors, caseworkers, um, you've got access to whatever you need whenever you need it. So um, that that was a really really great system. And you know, I know that with cross accommodation, it's People are meant to only be in there for six weeks, but some of the guys, the maximum line um, of some of the guys, there were up to six months. Um, I can actually remember the day that I was leaving, a couple of them were like screaming out and complaining they didn't want me to go. You know, I was part of that place, I was part of them, and uh, and also I think um, they thought that the food was a lot better during the period that I'd been there. So, um, so uh, yeah, they, they were kind of wanted it to stay that way. So, left that place, you know, went back to the warehouse as you saw, and. Uh, you know, just complete new appreciation for, for the crisis accommodation, the people that work there and the guys staying in there. Um, and then they moved us on to the, the rooming houses and um, that was just a whole other experience for me. Um, you know, I did mention a little bit on the, on the doco, but, um, you know, that place that I stayed in, the Ivy Grange, that, that place was uh, horrible, horrible. Uh, you know, I'm surprised, you know, the council allowed people to stay there, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know... Yeah, like the bathroom, like we're just disgusting. Like there's holes in all the walls, doors are kicked in. You know, they, they, I mean, this kind of tells you about the place, right? So in the foyer, they keep doors. 
And I mean like doors that you know you'd go and buy from Bunnings because the doors were that regularly kicked in that they would just have a supply of them right there. And they, they probably would have been about 10 or 15 doors just waiting for a door to be kicked in so the guy could go and, you know, replace a door. And that, that just tells you a lot about, you know, about the kind of place that it was. And um, it was. It was very... So firstly, it was just incredibly demoralising being in that place. You know, there's, there are no rec rooms. There are no support services. So what are you going to do? You're going to sit in your room um, with nothing in there, nothing to read, nothing to do. Um, and... You know, like a lot of the guys I also found as well, and it, it, it was it was really tough to begin with because a lot of the guys that I was speaking to in in there were like, yeah, this place is great and it's great value for money. And, and I was just like, this doesn't make any sense. And they didn't show it, but I actually, I went to the library one day because uh, I knew I could get, you know, internet there. And, and I had a look on Gumtree for accommodation and I found 3,500 places um, in Melbourne, in the, the um, metropolitan area there, that were cheaper than the 220 bucks a week that the residents pay to stay there. Um, now, of course, you know, that's, it's, that, that's just what I found. I mean, of course, the people would have to get accepted into those places, you know, so um, that would be tough. But that, that just goes to show you that it's, it, it is not good value for money. Um, yeah, so I just, um, I, I found it really hard to be be there and I, um, I found myself trying to spend as much time as possible away from that place. Um, you know, hence why you saw me doing things like um, going down to the, uh, the pub and the first night I actually went down there because there was nothing else to do and I just drank water and then the second day is when they started giving us the, the 15 bucks a day. Um, yeah, and you know, like, uh, like you would have seen on the, uh, the episode, you know, uh, you know I've criticised homeless people in the past for spending their money on drugs or alcohol. and. First day I'm given money, um, I went and spent it on a taco and a, and a pint. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing what you can see when you actually walk a mile in someone else's shoes. So, um, yeah, look, like I said, um, I just, I wanted to do everything I possibly could to be away from that place. The Saturday night when I actually went back there, um, you know, it's a Saturday night. A lot of the guys, I guess, have done the same, spent their money on, on alcohol and it was kind of like this ant's nest. Like it just, things just started to get more and more riled up. Um, it actually got to the point where, um, you know, we kind of, there was the crew and I were standing outside um, and we kind of made this decision that, um, you know, the security guy would escort me back into the room. I would kind of barricade myself in the room so that I was safe and the camera crew wouldn't come back in because it would just stir up, you know, volatile situations. So, yeah, it was pretty goddamn dangerous that night and um, you know I don't I don't know that I would have had to barricade the door but um, but it, it, it's what helped me sleep I didn't have to you know go to sleep wondering that someone was maybe going to kick in the door and um, you know I'd be in position I mean I can even remember hearing a couple of guys like you know kind of mumbling under their breath or screaming out about you know the SBS and you know yeah it just um, it started getting pretty horrible and you know, like I like I said on the thing, you know, it's, it felt like I was coming through the system. You're going from on the streets into crisis accommodation, and then you go into the next step, which is boarding rooms, and and um, it felt like I was getting just much much deeper in the hole. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I um, it was a very very different experience that last uh, that that last section. Um, you know, pretty much finished up the documentary from there, and then obviously we had the live show, and you know, I guess in terms of the live show, you know, once again just expressing my gratitude guys like you know the the messages of support um the the acknowledgement you know the things that people have shared with me about how from seeing what i went through you know they went and bought you know went took a homeless guy food shopping or went and spoke to someone um you know fantastic um you know i mean that's obviously the kind of change that i was hoping that this, this documentary would get so um yeah that look the live show i mean this this it's uh, it's a compact show it's you know it's running very quickly um, you know, a few people have said that they haven't talked really a lot about solutions. I know a lot of people on the live show are talking about affordable housing. Um, uh, you know, this might be a little bit controversial, but, you know, I was on the, in the experience and I want to share my thoughts. Like, I, I really don't think that um, the answer is public housing. Um, uh, you know, funnily enough, I've been speaking with a few people from the charities and, and that I, I deal with, and, and their view is, is primarily the same. Like, it, you know, certainly... Having a roof over someone's head is going to be better than no roof at all. But you know the the issues that they, that people are dealing with when they're when they're homeless or living on the streets primarily come from childhood trauma. It comes from family breakdown, domestic violence, sexual assault. You know, um, uh, 
those kinds of things. And that's really the trigger that sends people into a spiral and you know, it finds them hard to get out of there. We need to look at it as a society. Firstly, um, uh, as a society, you know, as you and I, we need to look at you know, why is it that you know, kids go to school and get taught geography, but at the same time we don't go to school and get taught how to have healthy relationships. We don't get taught how to resolve conflict. We don't get taught how to deal with failure. You know, they're the kind of life skills that people are lacking. And you know, while the family unit has provided that in the past, you know, we don't really have traditional families anymore. Um, you know, what is a family now is very diverse, you know, and I'm, I'm completely open and accepting of that fact, but um, there are a lot of, in a lot of cases where, you know, young people don't get the support and the guidance um, that they need. So that, that's where I really want um, to, that's really where, where I really want, you know, us as Australians and as a society to stand. From a governmental perspective, from the other end of the spectrum, uh, you know, what Con said at the live show was perfect. What we need is we need some goddamn leadership, you know, and our political system is, is just broken, you know, like politicians get into politicians get into politics to make a difference, but the system just really prevents it. They end up becoming bargainers. They end up becoming, you know, someone that's like, what what am I gonna sell out on so that I can get something else through? And then, you know, not only that, but primarily the people that provide donations for these political parties to run uh, is uh, you know is corporations and then of course corporate corporate interests are the ones that are really protected um, you know and we're not really thinking about you know us as Australians and what we need as a society to really move forward so um, you know look I, I'm, I you know I, I, I agree that you know having a roof over people's heads is uh, is important and, and we should continue to um, you know provide funding for that kind of stuff but if we're really serious about solving this issue, we need to look at um, what our priorities are and our political system. Um, so that, that's certainly the road that I want to continue down as, um, as things move forward. I've had a lot of people ask me about what's next. Um, there's a couple of things in the pipeline at the moment. Uh, you know, we continue to work closely with this, um, organisations like Manor and the Salvos and Vinnies and, uh, you know, those great organisations like that out there. Um, you know, I continue to lend my voice to the issue and, um, and yeah, stay tuned for some other things that we've got. But apart from that, guys, thanks for being, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we had a huge amount of viewers on the on the uh, the Facebook Live tonight, uh, and you know, make sure that you know, I'd stay, I'd love for you to stay in contact. You know, whether it's the Infinite Wealth Facebook page, whether it's my own personal Tim Guest Facebook page, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, uh, whether it's LinkedIn, please stay connected so that way we can um, you know keep the conversation going. Um, but have a great day, guys, and uh, thanks for watching.